Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we are welcoming back a very special guest, an expert guest. His name is Kevin Sanderson from Maximizing E-Commerce, and he is an expert at expanding globally on Amazon. He has been on our show before to help us ease our fears about expanding into international marketplaces, places like Canada and Mexico and the UK and Germany and all. Amazon is going global. I, I joke about Amazon wanting to take over the world, and this is part of what they do. And so uh, I will be honest, I have had fear about expanding, but as I have taken steps to expand into international marketplaces, I realize it's not that scary. It's not that hard, and we can all do that if that's something we want. And so today we're going to talk to Kevin about what's new in expanding into um, international sales and how we can kind of up our business without doing a whole lot of extra work, just expanding our products into global global marketplaces. So without further ado, let's bring Kevin to the show. But before we do, I want to make sure that I invite you to our Facebook community. Our Facebook uh, group has an amazing level of experts, all over 4,000 plus people in here of qualified Amazon sellers, beginners, newbies, advanced sellers that have, are there to answer your questions, answer your questions about wholesale bundling, about international, about all of these different things and how you want to expand. So go to mommyincome.com forward slash join us and use the code word today is global. So use the code word global and drop your email address and then we will welcome you into the group. You can ask questions, you can get started, you can keep moving. So make sure you join our Facebook group, use the code word global, and now welcome Kevin to the show. Kevin, welcome to the show. So glad you're back. Do you know this is the third time that you've been on the Amazon Files? I know. It's such an honor. The, the so, lucky I'm number just, three. I, yeah, I love to have you back. I love chatting with people that are interesting and, and you know, help us Wait, learn who, who? new things. <laughs> So for you guys that don't know, this is Kevin Sanderson. He is a, he is the podcast host of Maximizing E-Commerce. So go right now and subscribe and download and all that because us podcast hosts, we need to band together. We need to have more listeners understanding and, and getting educated with all of this free information. So please mm -hmm. go listen to Maximize E-Commerce. You will also you. find me on there at some point. So we'll have to have me on there again at one point too, right? Um, Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so many experts. I mean, you're talking PPC experts. You're talking people about exit strategies and growth internationally and building brands and figuring out how to get your packaging. Oh, he covers so many topics with his guests. So please make sure you subscribe to that. And Kevin, tell us what is new with you. I know you've been known as the international expert of helping people expand into the global Amazon market. So is that still what you're doing and what you're passionate about? Yeah, I absolutely still love helping people expand into international marketplaces. It's a, I, I think it was one of the best moves I made in my own business was to expand into Canada and UK. And, you know, I was actually, we didn't mention this before we hit the record button, but I was just at a conference uh, yesterday. Thankfully, it's, it was 30 minutes from my house. So I didn't have to worry too much about travel expenses. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, basically a tank of gas for two days. Um, so I got the chance to, you know, uh, speak at this conference about international selling. And I can tell people are still hungry for this general topic because it, it's one of those things that if once you get up and running, it can be one of the best ways to grow your business uh, now, of all the things you, you could do. Can you explain that a little bit? Like how has it really changed your business and in what ways? Is it just expanding? I, I don't know. I'll just let you answer. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So, you know, really when you think about it, we have, you know, products that we're trying to sell and people we're trying to sell to. On Amazon, if you have a product, you're going to hit a ceiling fairly quickly on the amount of demand. So you can either launch new products, which I think is a great thing, and you should do that and should find ways to, you know, increase the number of SKUs you have. But then also you want to find ways to find new people to sell to. And so if you go north of the border, so to speak, into Canada or across the pond into the UK, now you're accessing all new customers and whatever pricing and things you're doing over there have no bearing on what you do in the US. They're just bringing you extra sales you wouldn't have gotten of those products that you're already selling. Because chances are people, if you sell a product in the US, people are already looking for those type of products in Canada and UK. And 
you're taking your skill sets that you've already figured out as opposed to trying to figure out eBay, Etsy, uh, Walmart, et cetera. Yeah, I think that's so wise because you're basically just expanding on what you're already doing. And, you mm -hmm. know, it takes a learning curve to learn even like I think Walmart's a great place to expand. However, oh, absolutely. Um, it's so much more work to try to fit in and learn their processes and systems and their customer. It's, it's like a whole new job, a whole new business to figure out to where if you're expanding just from Amazon US to Amazon Canada or Mexico or UK, it's just a little, it, it's the same beast. It's just a little bit of a different, a few different processes. So you don't, you're not exactly. reinventing the whole wheel or your whole business or even your whole business model. It's simply just taking what you're already doing and just pushing it to a new level. Exactly, exactly. And so you're, you're, you're taking what you've already found you're good at and just expanding it, so to speak. So, and I know we've talked about this before, but just for the people that maybe haven't caught those episodes, and by the way, one of them is 231, the other one's 149, so you guys can go back and listen to all of those other episodes as well. But, you know, we're just here with the fresh information now, you know, it has become, if you feel like it's become easier to expand into the international marketplaces in the past few years, or is it more challenging? Um, that's an excellent question. In some ways it's easier in other ways, it's a little bit more challenging. So Amazon keeps trying new pro or new products, new service things that they're offering because they, they know they want people to expand internationally. And that's another reason I think to think about international expansion to kind of go back to the earlier question is Amazon keeps pushing us to go international. And it's not just because, you know, they're looking out for us, which I think in some ways they are. It's really more because they also know it's to their benefit to have more catalog of more products available across the world to people in different marketplaces. And they know it's a growth opportunity for them, which if it's a growth opportunity for them, it's also a growth opportunity for us. Now, to your question of is it easier or harder, in some ways it is easier because they keep adding new programs, North American Remote Fulfillment, you know, things that there's pan-European, although that's a little bit more complicated, um, you know, global export, they keep creating all these different, you know, uh, programs sometimes to at least just start selling. Although some of those come with a little bit of baggage of, it might be more difficult for the customer, like the customer has to pay custom duties or something if it's not coming mm. from a warehouse in their exact country. Um, so that can be a little bit more, uh, of a challenge. And then sometimes on the challenging side, especially in Europe, uh, Europe likes to add more bureaucracy and uh, more rules and compliance on things. And so uh, not to say that's anything that necessarily should keep people out, but there's things like EPR, extended producer responsibility, which basically mm. is a, a tax you have to pay every year to the future uh, disposal of your packaging, essentially. Huh. And so there are little tweaks like that, like especially in Europe, compliance is getting to be a little bit more challenging. But I would still argue if, let's say in the US, you put a dollar in, you get $2 out when you make a sale, just to keep it relatively simple. And in Europe, maybe with other costs, put a dollar in, you get a $1.75 out. Okay. That's not hurting your dollar in, $2 out in the US, and you're still beating the stock market, even when the stock market's doing good. And not only that, you're opening yourself up to dealing with like all those new customers. I mean, those customers oh, might be shopping here, but like they always weigh the cost of whether or not it's worth it to import and then pay this and wait three weeks mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So if they have two day free shipping prime in say Germany, um, you're mm -hmm. it's, it's, and you're losing, er, losing, I guess you're not making as much, maybe that quarter mm -hmm. or that 25% or something is going down. Um, it's something that you can pay attention to and have it be really easy. Like you said, I love that you pointed that out that like, you can only go so far with your product before you need to find new people to buy it. And that exactly. could come in the form of advertising. It could also come in the form of entering other marketplaces. And so I even love that you brought up like eBay, Etsy, Mercari, Facebook marketplace, things like that to where, yes, eventually you can expand into that. But it's also about, um, you know, that's a whole new set of things you have to do as well and learning. Oh, yeah. So you might as well cut your curve in half and just stick with the Amazon beast and learn the two or three few things you need to do to get your stuff moved over. So what else is new for you? I know that we had a chance to be part of a summit that you hosted earlier mm -hmm. this year, and that was a great success. Um, so are you, are you leaning more into the education space and bringing people together to just educate them for growth? 
Yeah, definitely. And, you know, first off, I just want to say you've spoken twice at my summits and I've had nothing but phenomenal feedback from them. And so, yes, yes, yes. And so, you know, when people start emailing me, I was like, Hey, how do I find out more about like, you know, something that someone mentioned in there, like, even it was just a throwaway comment, Mm -hmm. you know, when I, and I get emails about what someone viewed, you know, they did a good job in their presentation. Mm -hmm. So I was getting, you know, every time you, it's like, Hey, she mentioned such and such, you know, how do I, you know, like, so people really get into your session. So you do a very good job with that. Wholesale bundles for the win. (laughs) Well, you know, there's for people that are in the private label or wholesale world. And I think most of the people that come to my summits are more in the private label world. Mm -hmm. Um, They tend to always be looking for ways to expand their product offerings and whatnot. And you could take the products you're selling private label and make a wholesale bundle out of it. And so that could be another way to expand your sales in the same amount of time um i really capitalize on peak seasons right and that's what's great about wholesale bundles is that if you you know find a successful product and every product i mean I would say most, most products have complementary products or products that they could go in with other things to make that. So it's really just another way to sell the same product and, in, in, um, you know, not even necessarily variety, but it could be like, you know, I know you had mentioned some things that you were selling. You could put that in a gift box with a couple other mm-hmm. things and it's, it's, you know, match made in heaven. I think, um, yeah, it works for, for everyone. So yeah, it's great. So what else are you still selling on Amazon? Have you pivoted at all? I mean, I've been talking to so many people this past couple of weeks and every Everyone in the past couple of years has made changes. So I'm just excited about what's new for everyone. Yeah, exactly. And um, I still very much am a seller on Amazon. And to be completely honest, I think for a couple of years, it was just kind of somewhat on idle, like just, you know, moving along. And then I was like, you know, I, I go to these summits and I'm getting to speak to all these great people and hear all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, maybe I should put a little more focus on the actual e-commerce business. Um, and so I actually decided to move into a, I'm not at my house. So the last couple of times we talked, I would have recorded in the house. Um, I'm actually in a office with a warehouse in the back. And so um, I had moved all of my stuff that I had in a 3PL in Miami to uh, I'm about an hour and a half north of Miami and I moved it all here and I decided I'm really going to grow my SKU counts. And so I have a few things I'm doing to take the widgets I'm selling and add some sort of customization. So just as an example, so this is, I'm holding up a, a tumbler. I don't sell mm-hmm. tumblers, but we'll just right. use it as an example. It says best dad ever on the mm-hmm. tumbler. It's uh given to me for, it was a Father's Day gift. And so that's kind of a niche thing that Mm -hmm. people might give someone as a gift. And so what are some like niche things I can do to go after and, you know, make customizations like that to certain products. So like, for example, if I was selling tumblers, I could take a tumbler, like the one I'm holding right now, and then make some sort of customization to it to go after a very, very you know, even micro niche type audience don't need huge yeah. sales because, you know, I just need people to look up, you know, let's say gifts for dad and right. then this would be a good one or Tumblr Perfect for in dad. line. Yeah. With wholesale yeah, exactly. bundling, right. You're making something custom, mm-hmm. which is private label. And then you can hold, you can bund- bundle that with wholesale products and make a great, like you said, Father's Day gift set. I mean, I love that because you're using the best of both worlds, right? You're creating mm-hmm. something, manufacturing it, customizing it, and then you can sell that by itself. And then also in a kit with several other things, loving it. So that's great that you're making some changes. I know for sure um, for me, I've pivoted into, well, I mean, you call it wholesale bundles, but it's also like private label bundles. So I, mm-hmm. I've yeah. gotten to a whole new niche um, recently in the past uh, year or so of, um, I, I love cornhole. I play cornhole like every day. We are really into it here. And um, so I actually started looking at products and things that I could maybe make, manufacture mm-hmm. and or distribute and um, partnered with a couple of companies that have brands. And um, that's really an exciting and a new thing that we're doing as well. Um, and that's really mostly private label items um, that we're taking on um, brand what is that called? Like taking on the brand and, and controlling their Amazon or helping them with the Amazon. So that's oh, really, okay. really yeah, interesting yeah, yeah. for me. At first it was going to be just a consult and just like, let me help you get started on Amazon. And then they were like, well, we don't want to manage any of this at all. So maybe you can just have that and we'll just get a brand royalty. And we're like, 
perfect that was great oh, nice. so we're 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 still in like beta of doing that the products are mm -hmm. launched so we're working that out so that's also something new and and just giving people new ideas that just because you might have been the expert or you're the expert of international all that kind of stuff doesn't mean that we always have to stay there right we can always be pivoting into new and different things and that's kind of the beauty of e-commerce right is that as we're entrepreneurs and we're moving into new products and different things that we can mm -hmm. you know kind of grow and change at our leisure and it's it's uh, there's always room for that yeah and you know it, the, the saying if you're not growing you're dying so mm -hmm. to speak like we should be constantly growing and trying different things and i wasn't doing a good job in the actual selling of widget space you know so now i need to figure out how do i better sell widgets and you know going back to i think anything where we can control the process more is going to give a leg up in the future because everyone that's trying to find that private label product that can sell 20 30 40 50 100 units a day Everyone's looking at the same data. Everyone's trying to do all of the same things. Amazon's really dropped the hammer on any sort of like, you know, gray area type tactic, which I was never a fan of, but I think people what are finding it harder. Can you explain that for a minute for those that don't know what you mean by gray areas, um, like different strategies people are using that are kind of, you know, black hat? Yeah, so one of the big things was uh, people were doing all these giveaways. And yeah. so in people listening to this can probably relate. You may have bought a product and you read an insert and you're like, this doesn't make any sense. It would say something along the lines of potentially um, send us a screenshot of your review and your PayPal ID and we will send you $20 or something <laughs> like that. Um, or people had these very elaborate funnels in uh many chat mm -hmm. and so it was always one of those things where it was like amazon was never really 100 percent. and amazon even had some of these things in their uh especially with rebates in their um their their network so to speak like it was like if you went and looked up you know service providers for you know whatever mm -hmm. some of these that like were public about it like they weren't hiding this it was there but now that has amazon said well, wait you know you're giving away and we're kind of circumventing the in a way they the probably thought process. it was we're circumventing the process and mm -hmm. essentially we're circumventing also the algorithm mm -hmm. so the algorithm's trying to understand what's happening on the platform so if we start taking some of that influence off of the platform and it's not like you're just sending traffic to a listing you're sending traffic to a listing trying to trick the algorithm because people had these like these like uh, URLs, which I don't fully understand them, but apparently mm. make it look like someone had searched for a keyword and then added the product to cart. Mm. So those type of things are harder and harder. So some of those uh, things that people were doing, and you know, to be honest with you, that's what sells. You know, some of the courses people probably see right before a YouTube video is, mm -hmm. hey, here's these things you could do to sell 50 units a day of this product. Which I think if you can go after more stuff that flies under the radar and have the ability to adapt easier, uh, you're going to be better in the long run. Yeah. And, you know, I think sometimes with that, it's like it, it everyone has to define their goals for themselves and their business. You know, like I, I hear that 40, 50, 60 units a day of one thing. And I just, I actually laugh. I've been on Amazon <laughs> since 2008 and I have never sold 50 units in one day of any single product ever. And we do over a million dollars every year. So it's like right. one of those things, well, everybody has a different business model, different thing, a different place. So, you know, when I'm thinking, oh my gosh, if I had, I, I buy 50 units for the month, so not necessarily for the day. I just have a multiple different, you know, products that I'm bringing to the table and like it all adds up and um, I'm more of a margin seller than a volume seller. So to me, yeah. when I think of selling 50 units a day of something, I'm like, how many units a month is that? And I have to order three months of inventory at a time. I'm like, nope, that's not going to work for me. <laughs> but well, I mean, think about this. How many times have you gone into a store and there was one product? Yeah, never. <laughs> never. You go into a store and they have all kinds of different products, oftentimes multiple categories of products, even if it's kind of a niche specific store. Yeah. If you go into a camping store, they've got all kinds of, you know, camping stuff, tents, whatever. And, you know, they're going after maybe a certain avatar of person, but they're, they have all kinds of things to serve that person. 
And, you know, sometimes with Amazon, it's like, well, here's the one thing. Well, mm -hmm. Coca-Cola doesn't just put Coca-Cola on the shelf. They put all sizes, variations, diet, Sprite, things yeah. that you don't even realize are owned by Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we take that mentality of how do we sell on, you know, more on margins, but you can still have a good brand and a good presence. Oh, doing for that. sure. And I, and var variety is very important. I think that sometimes when people go into Amazon, they, depending on who they learn from and where and how they hear of it, a lot of people will go in with this one product, like uh, pipe dream that like, I am going mm -hmm. to go and I'm going to reinvent the wheel and reinvent some product private label. And I'm going to bring it to Amazon. I'm going to order 50,000 of these. And I'm going to, you know, they get stuck in that tunnel vision of that. And it's like, even if it, goes okay and sells a little bit for a time eventually that's not going to be the bee's knees anymore and you've got to do something else and something different so expanding and product line and category i've always been a, a very diversified person when it comes to offering uh, different products because i know everything also has a shelf life i mean at yes. some point your cycle of something being popular whether it's your brand or something else is just going to wane and so you've always got to have something in the queue to bring it to the table so let's talk about branding for a minute because i know mm -hmm. Branding has been, in the past, at least six months on Amazon, they have been really cracking down on the crazy players, which I'm happy about because there mm -hmm. are people out there that will literally open an Amazon account every single day, try to get through the process just to sell their cheap China, China stuff, you know, and it's like, okay, let's not, let's go there. But branding and building a brand on Amazon right now is more important than ever. They're cracking down on brand registry, uh, G10 exemptions, all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So what have you seen in the, as far as building a brand that has been most important in your store? Have you built your own brand or are you still doing like just like different wholesale products or do you have your own brand? Yeah, I've got my own brand. And so, you know, it's, uh, I've got a trademark and, you know, that's what you need these days, or at least be on the path for that to get brand registry. But if you think about it, you know, Amazon really likes the concept of a brand versus disparate things like where you've got, I'm just taking things off my desk, dry erase cleaner <laughs> right. and uh, mouse. Like, right. you know, if, if that's your private, it's one thing if you're reselling other products, Mm -hmm. But it's another thing if it's all under one quote unquote brand, because, you know, customers, they don't do it quite as much on Amazon as they do other places, but some will look to see what else you're selling. Mm -hmm. And if you have something that, you know, the person who would buy this would also buy that, you will see in your orders, all of a sudden you look and someone bought five different things mm -hmm. and they're all your stuff because maybe they had a comfort level with, oh, this one product you had. And then that kind of opened the door for other things. And so you're kind of cross-selling. Yeah, I love that. And I think Amazon is is expanding more into that. I would mm -hmm. love for them, I mean, if the Amazon people are listening at all, not that they would be, but if I'm just putting this out into the universe, Amazon, if you could do the frequently bought together with all my stuff, that'd be great. Like this person bought this and also bought this and also bought this all from my store. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> of right, course, your right, products right, right. have to be related. I know with the cornhole stuff that we've just been doing, um, we've launched seven new products in probably the past like three or four weeks, and we are trying our best to make sure that those are all being seen together. So we're losing using very minimal PPC. I mean, I'm talking like a dollar a day. Most people laugh at that, but like you know, there's just not a little wiggle room, and some of the margins we have our our, our items are small and lightweight and inexpensive but very high in demand so it's a little mm. bit more volume with those but then we're realizing that like people one person the other day bought every single one that we had so it was like okay each each variety so they did look out and search out so i'm like i wish there was a way that we could you know like on ebay when you can say check out my other auctions and link to your stock mm -hmm. that would be great but oh well but with brand registry you do have a you brand do store. Have to go to your storefront yes. yeah so and you, you do have, have your storefront and you can do a lot with storefronts and the Amazon posts are a thing too now. Mm -hmm. So Amazon really is moving towards this concept of like create a brand. Yeah. And, and live and influencers and trying to be mm -hmm. a little bit QVC and a little bit of this and that, you know, have you seen any of the lives where you have influencers oh, yeah, there, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. selling products? I'm like, I want to do that just for fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That could be an option for, it. I know there's people in the Amazon world that they also I'll just set up my camera outside and I'll demonstrate all my cornhole bags and stuff like that. Just like as like a live demo, I'll be like, this is how they work. I, of course, that'd be right. it probably wouldn't be very good. <laughs> that would be fun be to great. do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's really exciting. I know a lot of people get together and kind of, you know, we talk about our challenges and on Amazon and all the stuff that's kind of going wrong. And yeah, we can do a whole episode on all of the, you know, (laughs) the shit show that sometimes Amazon is, forgive Mm. my language there, but like, honestly, but it's also really good to sit and talk about all the things that they are doing well and are doing great and all these opportunities we all have to expand. So when it comes to branding, I feel like, and I don't know if you second this and you can chime in, is it's the single most important thing to do right now even if it's small and you have one product or one gift box or one wholesale bundle or whatever it is to establish and and a brand of some sort because that will be advantageous to you down the road um Mm -hmm. what what do you feel like are some things the major things that go into creating a brand in the beginning yeah so that's a great question and some of it is you know starting off with you know what are customers want what do they need understanding your customer who is the person that's going to be buying this what are some of the other things they might need down the road um i think some of it too is you know what are the tools that amazon gives to you and you know one is brand registry and then all the little you know bells and whistles that come out of it like some of the ad placements you can have because of it like for example sponsored brand video you know, that's a great option for a lot of people. Even if you're only putting in a dollar a day, you could create, it doesn't have to be this professionally produced thing. It could be something you made in Canva, potentially, or you do a screencast of maybe you reading a PowerPoint, or you don't even necessarily read it. You just have some motion going on the screen that shows your product being used in different ways. And that's something to give to brands. And so also taking a step back and like, you know, a brand doesn't have to be coca-cola disney american a household Express. name yes exactly thank you for saying that i say this to my clients all the time and people that are listening like when i people you say build a brand and people just go huh? i can't build a brand like, right they, they right. think of all the big brands they can think of and they're like that's not my goal that's not what i'm trying to do that's not i'm like okay do you want to succeed on amazon the answer is yes. Okay, great. Do you want to succeed on Amazon um, without a ton of extra problems? Yes, I do. Then what you need is brand registry. Now I tell people it could be XYZ Enterprises. It does not have to be some sexy brand name with some fancy logo or whatever. It just needs to establish that you are going to put a certain credibility on and name exactly. on your product and that you're going to underneath that product Uh, underneath that brand provide good quality products to customers or or whatever. Now, one of the problems I feel like I've heard and faced is um, when it comes to branding is people choosing a brand because they're not quite sure that they're, you know, it's like, it's easy if you're doing, you know, baby clothes. Okay. I can create a baby brand, but what happens when you're selling multiple products and multiple lines and multiple categories coming up with a brand seems to be a lot more difficult. Yeah, that's a good point. And sometimes it could just be functional. Your brand doesn't have to be this grandiose thing. So like one of the new things they've created for brands on Amazon is the brand story concept, Mm -hmm. which I need to go and check that out a little bit more. But I was talking to somebody who's a copywriter, basically she does listings. And she was talking about that. Like sometimes people like stress out because, you know, like they don't have a baby brand and they don't Mm -hmm. talk about, you know, their passion around gardening or whatever it is. It's like, you know, this thing screws on the top of something as an accessory, but right. maybe the brand story is that you create quality products for this, right? Or, you know, for people who do X, like it doesn't have to be this, you know, sob story that you were at your, you know, final mm-hmm. whatever. And, you know, right. You know, Walt I know. Disney people get on a train with $8 in his pocket and made up Mickey or something. Right, right. And I think that's so important that you say that because so many people get hung up on that whole, I don't have a story for my brand. Like a lot of clients I have, like I encourage them to create brands for their wholesale bundles. And I, I like one of one of my clients is a brand is the Grateful Gift Shop. Because mm-hmm. it's like, that can be anything. And I always encourage people oh, to use really... generalization, something that can mm-hmm. cover a wide range. I mean, if you think about like the brand Target, for example, I mean, Target's not actually a brand, it's a store, but it's still a brand. People recognize Oh yeah, yeah. people associate Target versus Walmart. Like, yes, you, you, for sure. There's We just mentioned those two. <laughs> Everyone just had pictures in their mind of what the experience, what the store was, everything. Absolutely. It, it's the same and it's completely different. 
Right. So, so picking something like that, that, that's, um, you know, for those that are saying I sell multiple things and building a brand is hard because I don't, I don't want to have 10 brands. I have different products and niches. Same for me. That's why I picked something that was like very general. Kristen's favorite things can be my brand mm -hmm. and my favorite things can sure. be car parts and groceries. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. So as long right. as your brand is something that it is all encompassing, just make sure that the quality of the brand that you're bringing to the table is you're paying attention to that because more and more um, these days, people are looking for that product quality and experience and unboxing mm -hmm. a very, you know, just an experience in general, like not just for a product, but they want to be like, wowed, you know, and yeah. not with your HDMI cords and tarps and things like that. What you're talking about, if you're doing a gift of some sort or something that, that is a, of, you know, say more value than like 30 bucks, you definitely mm -hmm. want to think about your brand and how it's portrayed with um, your customers. So, okay, now we're talking about all these branding things. And obviously even you and I are still learning about brands and brand stories and mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff, but I kind of hear you're having another summit and it's about branding. So tell me about that. <laughs> Yes, because I, I truly believe this is something that I think sellers are hungry to learn more. And it's kind of the direction we're being kind of pushed, pushed in, into. So to speak. Yes. yes, yes. And so, you know, with Amazon, you know, to your point, we can complain about, oh, but it was different five years ago. It was different two years ago or whatever the, you know, whenever someone started or wish they would have started, you know, we could always look back to the good old days, but, you know, you right. can't control the hand that you're dealt, but you can control how you play it. And that's not a bad thing to say, okay, how do I build more of a brand experience? And again, it doesn't have to be Nike. It could just be, you know, you know, Kristen's favorite things or whatever it is. And so that person who maybe buys your product and they come back and they at least remember, oh, I bought this brand before and they're more likely to buy again, you know, if they need something similar to that, you know, then that's only going to serve you. Yeah. I will so, I'm gonna tell a brief branding story that sure. I feel like is always relatable when it comes to this for people that are listening, is that it will have an, a, a, an effect on you, how you open a product, how you open a page. There's, a, I bought some sunglasses about four years ago from Amazon. I was just looking for, you know, they were kind of stylish, whatever. I didn't expect a ton from them being 15 bucks. I just was like, I need these. They're cute. Fine. Um, but when I got them, they arrived in this beautifully matte black box that had this ribbon around it. And then you open up this box and then it has a velvet sleeve inside of it. And then it has these glasses on them. And it came with this card and it said, thank you for purchasing glasses from these glasses from Sonos. Here's this, this, they also included without even mentioning this, this little cleansing cloth that comes with it. So you can wipe off your sunglasses. Like if these are under lifetime warranty, if you ever have any issues, please contact us and immediately contact us on Amazon. We will send you a brand new pair, whether it was 20 years ago or five minutes ago. We want you your business. And I will never buy sunglasses from anyone else now because I really felt like they cared. And I really felt like if these nice. sunglasses do scratch, which they did three years later, and guess what? I reached out to them and they sent me not one, but two brand new pairs. Oh, so wow. customer service, this is for a $15 pair mm -hmm. of sunglasses. So the customer experience is super, super important. And that box and that one velvet sleeve that they put in there made a difference. I felt like I was opening Ray-Bans, you know, I felt like this was a super high quality product and it was, it was just wasn't expensive, but I will never forget that brand because the way that they presented that and then how they honored their guarantee. So, um, the brand experience, even if it was Kristen's favorite things, it's about the how and the presentation. So I'm hungry to learn more about branding and your your summit that you're coming to. And again, I get to speak at this conference as well. Yes. So I'm super excited to be able to help you put my two cents in about um, branding and how people can expand their brand and how they can reach customers in a in a way that is unforgettable, even if it's inexpensive. And move forward. So tell us about the summit because I know it's coming up next week and we're really excited about that. So let's talk. Yes, the summit will be August 16th through the 19th. We make it super affordable to join us. Uh, if you join us for the days of the summit, it's going to be a whopping $7. Um, and then you, people would have the ability to upgrade to VIP if they wanted to keep the um, the recordings and as well as some other cool stuff that we've got going on for VIPs. And then if someone's listening to this and it's after the fact, 
uh, they can always get on the wait list for future summits. My plan is to do these type of summits pretty much quarterly. It wouldn't all be brand related or whatever. Now, what's interesting is I'll just say this. So um, you spoke at another summit back uh, earlier this year, and it was uh, the Convert More Click Summit, which some people in your audience may be thinking, well, that doesn't necessarily apply to me and my business. Some of the best compliments I had about that sub or that summit were people that came from your audience. And so awesome. I think it's something that I think uh, doesn't matter if you're, you know, private label or your, uh, you know, wholesale bundles, or you know, even if you're a wholesale arbitrage. seller yeah. or arbitrage. Yeah. yeah. Some of the, what you're going to learn is some things that are going to apply to you. Well, and the reality is, is that you and I both know, and everyone else knows this, and anyone that's listened to me for more than five minutes is really going to hear this, is that like, I am a huge education buff. And the reason is because what got you here will not get you there. And if you exactly. intend to go there, you have to learn something new in order to get there. And so I'm always learning. I'm ex I get excited to learn. To me, that's part of the adventure of life is learning something new and trying it and giving myself permission to be bad at it in the beginning, because there's no right. expectations when you're a beginner. People are like, yeah, you suck at that. You're like, like, that's fine because I just learned. Um, so I love being a beginner and a lot of different things and learning things because I'm just so hungry to learn more. And I know, I know, I've said this before. I've had to say, I told you so to some clients already this past couple of months. <laughs> brand registry is not going away. Trademarks mm -hmm. aren't going away. Amazon is going to be brand focused in the next couple of years if you don't have your own brand. Yeah, you could probably still do like wholesale and jump on listings and you know do things like that, but they're not going to be welcoming new listings unless you have some sort of brand to attach them to. So learning how to brand, learning to brand in a way that will bring, that doesn't have to cost a lot of money, but it also can just bring an experience that people can come back to you more and more. If you want to success, succeed on Amazon, I think in the future, um, you really need to have some sort of brand that you can um, kind of circle the wagon around. So I know that your summit is going to be about, we're going to be building brands online, grow, growth opportunities, PPC, conversion rates, very Amazon focused, although there will be other materials to expand your branding outside of Amazon because you have a ton of experts coming. This is what, three days full of nonstop education. Two days. Okay. No, I, four. I had, no, four days. I was like, oh, yes. wait, I was like, wait, 16th through the 18th? I don't know. Um, it's just going to be 19th. really, yeah. really exciting because how often do we really get together with all of these other experts and just kind of fire hose you with all the information you need to be successful? So guys, plan for it now. Seven bucks? You can't complain about seven dollars. Oh, yeah. And the reason there's a price is because you need to invest in yourself. We could, you could do it for free. I could do for free. We all do free. We do free podcasting, right? But the idea is when you invest in yourself, then you really are going to take it a little bit more seriously. When you paid for something, I don't care if it was $7 or $70 or $700, you are going to invest in yourself. You're going to put it on your calendar. You're going to show up. You're going to ask your questions. You're going to learn something. And for sure, like my segment alone will earn you more than $7. So I can just, I can just be That's honest true. about that right now. One thing you implement that yeah. Kristen teach you, could teach you a uh, hundred thousand, many times or hundreds yeah. or thousands of times over. Yes. That's seven dollars. So, so this is you guys, a very this is easy return on investment. Yes, and although I know the time is one of the things that people complain about the most, it's really not the money. Whether this was seven dollars or seventy or whatever, um, people are, oh, well, I don't have time to spend three days. I'm like, you don't have time not to educate yourself to grow your business, like. Everyone, the, all the most successful people in the world, they have coaches, they have mentors, and they're constantly learning, changing, and adapting to growth. And that's how you succeed at any business, any job, any career, hell, even relationships. Like you have to yeah. continually be learning in order to grow and change. So this is what I'm going to be doing in mid-August. And I really hope you guys are too. Mommyincome.com forward slash brand mastery. That is your link. And it's going to link you to sign up for the summit so that you can join me and so many others and just learning more about brand mastery because I want to master my own brand and actually mm -hmm. four brands now. So I'm a little brand overwhelmed and um, I know I'm going to learn a ton, of, a ton of stuff as well. I know the last time my favorite segment was the PPC Ninja. That was a really awesome segment there too. So mm -hmm. there's always something to learn you guys and I want you to be able to sign up. So mommyincome.com forward slash brand mastery, uh, get your tickets and sign up and there will also be a chance for you to upgrade to VIP so that you have all of the training and all of the bonuses and all the extras forever. Exactly. Exactly. And one of the nice things too, is 
you know, gas has gone up, although it's gone down a little bit, but still like, it's still, you know, way expensive, more expensive than it was even a couple of years ago. And, you know, t- tickets on the airlines are more expensive. They don't have enough pilots and all that. So I, the conference I was just at yesterday, um, as we record this, thankfully I didn't have to pay for that, but I mean, people were paying like, mm-hmm. you know, over a grand for just a, a flight to get there yeah. and, you know, add in the hotels and all this stuff. We're bringing similar type experience of all these experts in a short period of time that you can really immerse yourself in the content and seven dollars honestly you know. and if you have wi-fi i mean you could literally just be sitting on your patio you could be having a cocktail yeah. you could be at the pool or the beach and just chilling mm-hmm. and listening and being educated so that's what i love about that too is that it can be on your time but mark it on your calendar just like i tell mm-hmm. you guys every week every month when i drop new trainings you've got to put it on your calendar and make time for yourself be selfish about what you're learning in your business because it doesn't come by osmosis you don't just get to like i mean i would love to fall asleep with podcasts in my ears and wake up with all kinds of new knowledge but honestly it doesn't happen we have to be actively engaged in our own education and isn't amazing in this wonderful country that we live in that we have access to as much education as we can get Mm -hmm. and most of it is a lot of it's free and if it's not you know, we still have access. So it's, it's so amazing. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for spending this hour with us. And just, you know, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. And same thing with the listeners, you guys come to the brand mastery class. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be taking major notes because I've got stuff to learn. I'm ready. I'm excited. Mommyincome.com forward slash brand mastery. And of course, subscribe to maximizing e-commerce podcast. You're going to hear lots of great stuff on there with Kevin and his team. And again, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. I look forward to working with you in the uh, summit and we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon files. Bye folks.